Arizona's Family Plus starts now. Well, good morning, Arizona. It may be wrapping up, but we still have a lot more local news for you right now. I'm Gina Maravilla. Thank you so much for joining us here for Arizona's Family Plus. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Take a look at your top stories. In fact, we want to give you a live look outside right now. Did you feel the chill in the air this morning? The high today, we are only expecting to get to 70 degrees. And in the high country, well, they're getting their first snowfall. Our crews headed up to Flagstaff for a fun day in the snow. In fact, Maria Hechinova got the chance to do the first snow angel of the GMAS season. Flagstaff is waking up to snow. There's a little bit of a breeze, so if you're going to get outside, make sure you bundle up and you are prepared. We are on the north end of NAU's campus. You can see the contrast between the fall colors, those red leaves, and then also the snow on the ground. There's a pretty good light dusting. It's still fluffy right now, but this weather really catching some people off guard. I had a chance to talk to a Peoria family. They traveled up from the valley and they had a snowball fight this morning, but they weren't exactly prepared with the proper gear. How old was that one? Uh, we got a so we came up here to take some pictures of the fall colors and to just get away from uh, town. And we were very surprised when we woke up and snow was everywhere. So it's been pretty fun. If you are going to come up to Flagstaff from the valley or go down to the valley from Flagstaff, just be very careful on the roads. It was a little tricky coming up here this morning. The snow plows were out, but it was still a little bit icy. So again, this wouldn't be good morning, Arizona, Arizona's family without a snow angel. So this is the first snow angel of the season. We know it snowed last week, but this is really the sticking point, right? It's actually sticking to the ground. This is a what the heck snow angel. And to be clear, I'm not trying to one up Ian. I'm doing it my own way. Back to you. And frankly, it was fantastic form. Thank you, Maria. You know what? It was not Flagstaff only that saw its first snowfall. Thanks to Ellie for sending us this video from Pine Top. You can see all the snow there in her neighborhood. And we should mention it is only October. <laughs> Speaking of it being October, it is the season to be scared, right? So scary attractions are up and running across the valley, but the Phoenix Fire Department wants to make sure that you never run into any unexpected spooky situations. So the fire department was out at the 13th floor haunted house out in the West Valley. Deputy Fire Marshal Cindy Staub went over all the features that go into making a haunted house safe. She says they work with the 13th floor every year. They do a lot of pre-planning. Like we said, it's all mapped out. It's all the egress is ready to rock and roll. We have emergency lighting that pops on. We have lighted exit signs. There's even uh, arrows on the floor that tell you how to get out of the building. <laughs> well, the deputy fire marshal also says that you should make sure the attraction that you're going to does have the fire department's approval. Haunted houses must be permitted to operate in the city of Phoenix. Right now, the 13th floor is the only permitted haunted house in the city of Phoenix. Well, can you believe it's already that time of the year? The TPC in Scottsdale is starting to transform ahead of the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Construction at the 16th hole is just getting underway, and Kylie Cruz is showing us how for 2022, organizers are planning to go all out. It is an exciting time out here at TPC Scott's over there gearing up for the Phoenix Open. It's a little less than four months away, but we know it takes a village to put this together. 16th hole, the iconic hole, obviously construction here. It's moving along pretty nicely. And the big chief with the Thunderbird, Scott Jenkins, joins us to talk a little bit about the production. Tell me what it's like to put this all together. It takes months. Uh, it definitely takes months. It's a lot of, a lot of hard work uh, involving a lot of sponsors, a lot of our vendors. You know, every year we come together and we pull it off. So we're seeing everything kind of transform, and we do expect next year to be somewhat similar to early 2020, 2019, and all of that. That's definitely the plan, to return to what our normal, uh, you know, 2020 build looked like uh, with all of our venues. So how do ticket sales? Because the hospitality suites, they're in hot demand, I'm assuming. The, there's plenty of pent-up demand. Uh, most of our, if not all of our hospitality suites are sold out with a pretty, pretty substantial wait list, but you know, general admission tickets are, will always be available. Uh, Greenskeeper, some of our other uh, venues, there's still tickets left. 
So the date is something else we got to make note of because when I think of the open, I always think it's that first weekend, you know, the big weekend, first weekend in February. This year, it's the second weekend. Why is that? Uh, it's really to, uh, everything to do with the Super Bowl. Uh, the PGA Tour likes to align us on the Super Bowl weekend because we're one of the only events that c can handle it and still get TV ratings. And so that's why we're, we match up with the Super Bowl every year. And when they moved, uh, the PGA Tour uh, quickly moved us as well. Okay, so just make note of that for your plans. It's February 7th through the 13th, Monday and Tuesday. You still can get in free, which is great. And before we go, we do want to talk about all of the events that are happening around. It's not just the golfing. Obviously, the bird's nest is going to be hopping as well. Who do you have coming? Uh, super excited about the lineup and that we'll have the bird's nest again this year. Uh, Wednesday is yet to be announced yet, but Thursday we have Sam Hunt. Uh, Friday is Macklemore, and Saturday is uh, Kai Goes Back. Uh, he played in 2020 and did a uh, fantastic job, so we're excited to see him back. Okay, we're excited to be back here again. If you drive in this area, if you live in this area, you're going to notice the changes over the next couple of months. And the Open, it is right after New Year's, so it goes Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and then the Phoenix Open here, less than four months away. Get excited. <laughs> we certainly are. Thank you so much, Kylie. Speaking of big changes in construction, Legacy, Legacy Sports Park in Mesa, it's now known as Bell Bank Park. The area is currently under construction as we speak as well, but there are big plans for this complex and Ian is checking it out. Scott, this place is massive. You know, when I grew up in the Dobson Ranch, we used to play football behind it. LDS Church on a small patch of grass off of Keating and Dobson. But look at this. This is how you do some sports. Uh, a massive, massive, massive undertaking here now called Bell Bank Park. And this thing is going to be ready to rock in about 90 days. I'm here uh, with the two brothers behind this. Uh, I, I thought it was like the Intel plant. You guys, <laughs> you guys were building out here. Uh, Brett uh, Miller joining me and Chad as well. What can people expect from this thing if they've not heard what's going on here. So this is 320 acres, the largest family entertainment sports park in the country. This place is for all inclusiveness, right? It's anything you can understand from, from soccer fields, basketball, pickleball, youth camps, clinics, teams, anything and everything will be played here. We also have a huge entertainment component as well that a lot of people are going to understand. It's not just a sports facility, but it's a true all-encompassed enter entertainment side. There's going to be a restaurant, an arcade. We have an 18,000 square foot bar restaurant. It's called The Goat, the greatest of all time. Arcade facility is going to house 85 traditional arcade games. We're also going to have an esports component with a 6v6 stage. So if little Johnny's out here playing soccer and his brother or somebody else wants to come in and play esports, they'll have that capability as well. That's cool. Families can kind of consolidate. Chad, what was the, this has been a long time in the making. Tell me how this all started. Yeah, so the original vision and concept came about almost 30 years ago from my father. So what started off as four soccer fields, a couple of baseball, soccer, softball fields, and a little bar restaurant has now evolved into a 320-acre, almost $300 million family sports entertainment park, which Brett alluded to a second ago. This is the largest family sports entertainment park in the country. So it's truly impactful to generate almost close to 1,500 jobs, uh, close to a couple hundred million dollars a year in economic impact back to the state of Arizona. So uh, to be able to bring this vision back home to where Brett and I grew up is truly impactful to us and our families. That is going to be great. Uh, it's going to be great for families here. There's a lot. It's going to be big economic impact. You mentioned the arcade. Do you know the games that are going to be in there yet? Oh, we've got Mission Impossible. We've got everything from traditional. Why am I having a can't think about it around pinball games. Rampage. Uh, we'll put it in there for okay, you. Okay, we're gonna work on. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna work on it. I lost my earpiece, guys, so I can't hear you. But they're doing big things out here in the East Valley. Massive, massive things that are gonna serve a lot of folks. And in 90 days, uh, you'll be able to enjoy it yourself. That sounds pretty darn cool. And the goat, we'll just have to go out there just to get a picture for Instagram. Hey, thank you so much for watching Arizona's Family. We really appreciate your time. For the very latest traffic, news, weather, head to our website, azfamily.com, or you can download our news app. I'm Gina Maravilla. Make it a great day.